The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. Got a little conflict there, and I said, "Okay, I, I'll, I'll, I've got time. I'll do it because uh, I've done most of. I've done my work for my subscribers. Sent out my newsletter. Just preparing for the rest of the day. <clears throat> Here we go. The Dow closed at thirty-five thousand two hundred fifteen yesterday. It rolled over from. Uh, well, I should do this. I forgot all about that. Let me just get this ready, because there are some of you that perhaps have never seen my work. So, in the Chapman Wave methodology, it's just a real simple concept that was uh, introduced uh, by the charts that I was notating, hand charting with pencil and paper and engineering paper way back. Um, <laughs> before the computers started doing this so easily for us. But um, I found that after the fourth highest peak from a low bar, other things could happen. The objective really was to see, and I call this a technique that I developed, called the, it was the seven waveform thinking. Um, look at the start here. You've got the low bar, and then you go one, two, three, four, five, six. And on that seventh leg up, you get your leg D, eighth leg down, is peak D. I found uh, that in fact prices kept going. I did it with a price, a closing price chart. And then I found that after D you could go to E and F and even a G. So there was seven letters. It's like a musical, you know, in music, for those of you who know the piano, you've got um, you've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then you have to start again. There's never an H. It's like a quadrant. You've got your four your your four notes at the beginning, the four notes at the end, halfway point. So in a sense, it's got a little bit of similarity. That's about the only thing similar. Except, I, I used to be a professional musician, and people used to say, "How how do you get into this? What's the what's the what's the connection between the market and music?" I said one word: timing. So that's in essence, we're trying to time everything in music. You've got to be right on the beat. Well, sometimes you have to be right off the beat, but you have to be exact. And in this particular instance, it's the same thing. You want to be able to develop a technique that uh, identifies lows, identifies highs, and gives you a little bit of a cushion so that when there's that after a big bounce, there's this kind of vicissitude, this kind of wobbly action before it picks up again for another move up. You want to be able to have a stop in so that you don't get taken out. All right, so this is the idea. Peak A, B, C, D, the fourth highest peak, you get upgraded from about a B. If the technicals are improving, you go from a buy signal to a buy mode. The reason why I'm saying this is the objective is to, to get you to a D. It can go to an E and an F and even a G, but a D, other things can happen. So the objective is to go from a buy signal to a buy mode, meaning at least four higher peaks. Okay, well, what did we get here? Looking at the left side chart, right here, let me move this away. I'll, I'll keep it there because I'm going to be coming back. Um, we went to a D, and that's actually where we initially started a short with just a very brief one, took a tiny loss, and then we stepped aside and I said, wait a minute. As long as this nine-period moving average, this green line, is way above the 14, you've got internal strength. But when I talk about internal strength, I'm talking about this particular technical tool. And for it to turn around and go pink, as it did right here, right here on this particular high of 34,257 on the 1st of May in the Dow, it turned pink and it stayed pink for a while until it went back to green. And we've been green ever since. Even that very sharp pullback in mid-July did not turn it pink. It held, the green held. And that to me, I call it the indicator of last resort, just like the Federal Reserve is the bank of last resort. So this for me is a technical indicator. There are times where it's not as important. But in this particular case, trying to pick a top, uh, that is a short-term top on the day. I'm not talking about weekly yet. This is the weekly here, and here's the, um, here's the monthly chart. Let's just leave that for the moment. Now, what's really important about this, look at the coincidence that we've got. SPX.X, there it is, the S&P, peak F as well. 
Uh, I haven't changed the color and I haven't put a down arrow either in the Dow or the S&P because I need to see a couple of closes below the 14 period moving average of the price. But to get a sell signal that gets upgraded to a sell mode, I need to see the nine period moving average cross negative. And look, it hasn't, even if you go to the futures. Look at this. The futures are so close. Look at that. That green is, ha, huh, we saw that before. And it, look at that. And it bounced. So all I can say is that we've kind of run out of energy. But now, because I'm looking at some kind of a top, let me run all these. Look at the QQQ. Goes to a peak D. It does almost a one to one to the downside from the 387.98. This is where it should have a little bit of a bounce. But in the weekly chart, it's a peak D. Look at the uh, IWM, the Russell 2000, made a peak F just like the others. <clears throat> but I haven't been able to put a down arrow in yet because none of the ten, the price hasn't moved low enough yet. Yet the MACD's turned down. Stochastic's under 80% on balance volume. It's really close to some kind of a pullback. Now let's go to gold. You'll see the same sort of thing. Gold. <clears throat> Turned pink a couple of days ago. And look at this candle. It looked so ugly earlier this morning. It went all the way down to 1956, was it? Uh, 1954.5. And here it is, a 1978.2, right on the 200 period exponential moving average. So gold is having a bit of a bounce here. That means that the dollar is probably going to pull back a little bit. Yep, it's pulling back to 17 ticks at where? Leg D, maybe a peak D today. <laughs> We're going to be watching all this so closely because, I, as I say, I'm a technical analyst. This is where Tommy does this fantastic job. He would have analyzed the ADP report and everything. I say, yep, it's really important. But for my work, most of the time, I'm really looking at what does the market do with the, with the data that comes in? And right now, the, 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 the Dow is up, the futures are up 71, the S&P futures are up uh, 17. So the, it's responding quite nicely. So I, I don't like to get in the way of the price. And that's the price is saying, hey, not too bad. Now I want you to go something that's really important. Look, well, first of all, let me go EUR, USD. This is the currency. Made a peak D, three doji candles at the top. Pulls back quite sharp, having a nice session today, kind of corresponding to... Uh, to the gold action, peak D in the weekly, but the technicals are still pretty good. Look at the USD JPY. I was expecting that there could be a try for a leg D, and lo and behold, what did we get? We got a leg D yesterday, and there's a chance that it becomes a peak D today. The last one was a peak E, and it pulled back very sharply. So here we are, the um, US dollar Japanese yen, that's the yen uh, itself we, we're looking at. Uh, peak D in the daily underneath the previous high that usually says hmm, that's not such a great sign and the weekly chart hasn't yet made its D now what I want to do is to go to silver silver is trading quite nicely to the upside 48 uh, ticks at 23.74 but that 200 period moving average magnet it's just holding that price back so I, I think we've got a chance of a bit of a, a pop in gold and silver but I think they'll be coming back high grade copper I like to do all of these high grade copper is trading at 3.85, down 0.04. It's just stuck. How important is the 200 period? I like to put these technical indicators into my charts. I don't need them until I need them. Look how important the swing has been with this 200 period moving average. Up, H pattern goes to F pattern, comes down. Confirmation stall square at the 200 period moving average. And PF pulls back and now it's gone to peak in stall. High grade proper stalling at this particular time. I haven't taken the time yet to go to bonds. We'll do that as soon as I return. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. We're back. I don't really. Uh, this is Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. I, I don't want to go to too many of the stocks that are the requests that I've got until the market actually opens because there are going to be some gaps to the upside and some of them and gaps to the downside. Let's just see what happens there. Uh, but I did want to say uh, I had a question about the GDX. Yeah. So uh, for subscribers to my opening call, we were in the GDX. One of the reasons why is that I said I don't see any tremendous strength there. But there's enough strength based on the fact that the dollar's rallying so strongly that it's kind of holding well. Well, I had I, I put a stop in a little wider than I normally do, only because I wanted to give it room. We got taken out. Uh, the, the irony of the whole thing is that I believe that you could hold the GDX anyway, even from the, the 33 level uh, or just in the high 32s that it was at uh, three weeks ago. And you will get your money back. There's just no question in my mind. It's just a matter of time. It's going to go even higher than that. But you don't want to. I I do not like to sit through the vicissitudes of the market by, by sitting and saying, "Oh my God, now it's down 10. Now it's down 15 percent. Now it's down 25 percent." And then it comes back. I'd rather have that cash because that cash can be used, or I'd rather have the cash ready to come back into the same thing, even if it's back at the same price. But I'd rather get the trend. Because I believe very strongly in the tide. So if you're looking at the tide, there's a chance that um, because of the bonds that we're looking at right now, let me just go to the bonds themselves. So look, the bond made a low yes, uh, this morning <clears throat> of right there, 120 point. No, it was 119, 119 and 25, 30 seconds. Do you know that the low back in October of last year was 118 and 31, 30 seconds? Now, this is a continuous contract, so that price could change. But the low of uh, October was almost touched. And look at the synchronicity between the timing here. Uh, I, maybe I've got that in the TLT. Let me just have a look. Oh, I hadn't. Oh, I did draw it in. But yesterday, once again, all of a sudden, I had a, a shut down. Um, because of something that happened, I had to suddenly shut down and I, I did not want to save because I would have saved the error that was occurring. So I decided I wouldn't do that. I would, in fact, 
I would just say don't save. So I lost a bunch of stuff that I'd actually done. It's not a big deal. It doesn't take me very long to repeat it again, except when I come back to look at something that I thought was complete. So what I like to do is, if it isn't very obvious to to a, a trough that you can use or or um or an arch high, um, I go to a particular candle in my analysis. So this is the TLT looking at the symmetry. Remember, I like to look at bar symmetry of that cup to this cup, it's a little extended to the right. And that just says that by the week of the 18th of August, um, that is 18th of August will be, so we've got a partial week now, full week this uh, this coming week, next week will be a full week, so the second full week. So going to Friday a week, you've got until Friday a week to go in the TLT to 91.85. I think we're ready for a little bit of a bounce attempt after these four, one, two, Three gaps to the other to the downside. These four candles demonstrate that. So you certainly are ready for a, just a purely technical balance. But it seems to me that based on everything I'm looking at here, that the yields are getting very close. Look at the TBT. That's the inversion of the one I'm showing you, the TLT right now. Are getting very close to getting to to trading, not just hitting the midpoint remember i like to look at a cup formation and then i say within that there's really a rectangle that i'm looking at and if you go halfway into the rectangle there are a whole bunch of things that i do i've got webinars on these things there's a halfway marker right there gotta make sure it's parallel there it is parallel that halfway marker and it isn't quite right yet i have to bring it down i do this by eye pretty sure i'm accurate because i've done this so many times so that's your midpoint and that midpoint in the TLTBT is 32.90 uh, within a couple of pennies. And where we are right now is be 34.19. That makes this whole area, especially the high of the week of the 3rd of March, at 32.75. That makes that the start of key support because it can go a little bit under it, but on a closing basis, you don't really want to see if you're looking for the upside, you don't want to see a close on the downside. So, Within that context, what I am saying is that if you look at that, put it together with the TNX, the TNX is the 10-year yield, that's a little different. Look, that 43.33, that's 4.333. High that was made back in October of last year. Have a look at this. The high, the high yesterday, well, the high, yeah, it's 42.05. Uh, wait, 42.05, is that, oh, that's, is that today? We haven't started yet. Yeah, that's the high today. 42.05, that's 4.205 in the 10-year. I mean, look how close you are. And now if I do exactly the same analysis as saying, whoa, a cup formation, find the, find the low bar that you can use as, as a pivot point, as a fulcrum, as a, there we go, as a plumb line right there. And what do you get? You get left side, right side, I'm going to go, I'm going to be a little creative there. I, I won't, I'm going to be a little conservative. I'm not going to go to the low. I'm going to the bar, the little doji candle low before that. And I'm going to say, okay, let's see if you've got that. And then I'll draw a Chapman wave inside wedge target re resistance line right here. Because this one's now finished. This is the falling axe formation. We've broken out of it. I don't want to go through the whole thing there. Let's just get rid of that. And now let's do this. And you take the trough on the left side, go like that, and there it is. This is the Chapman wave inside wedge, target resistance line, dash green on the way up, and it hit it exactly once. Pull, oh, it hit it every time. Pull back, pull back, pull back, and it's touching it this week. So you've got until the week of this being a little bit uh, uh, more conservative. The week of the, the September. In this particular, for the in inversion, so uh, to get to the 43.33 level, can it do it? Well, the technicals are suggesting that it's a possibility, even if there's a bit of a pullback here. And that just said, you've got to be somewhat careful about yields. And that takes me to something that I'll discuss more in my show coming up, the Tiger Technicians Hour. And that just takes us to the HGX. HGX, don't X, there we go. That is... No dot, they changed that, HGX, I should know that by now. In leg C, uh, this is the Philadelphia Housing Index sector. So it's a, this is a sector index. It's gone to leg C in the monthly, 
leg C in the weekly, a peak C if there's no new high this week. And I, I looked at this, this I, I can't look. There's almost a chap wave instant restart here. Oh, I don't want to go into that right now, but that's a technique where you've got three bars in which to take out the left side high after a peak D. If you do that, it says there's a really good chance that you can go E slash A, F slash B, G slash C, and then you'll get to a D. It's like a whole new buy mode. But this took four bars to do that. So I can say, yeah, this is a chance. This is E slash A, this is F slash B, G slash C, and this is a D. I'm not going to make it complicated right now. It is in leg C. But it's a peak D already in the um, daily chart making this H pattern. If it starts to close two out of three sessions below 554.04, that's the low of the 20th of July. You've got yourself a situation that says, be careful, because now you've got to look at left side indicators to say, where can it go to? But the nine is still positive. Interesting, huh? I'll be right back. Basil Chappers, you can talk about nine. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman sitting for Tommy O'Brien. This is Market Kickoff Show, and I'm, I'm sitting in, I just had a conflict. I said I, I can do it. Uh, we're looking at the one-minute chart of the E-mini it went to a long sideways rectangle formation, and then it went uh, just below it for a moment. We're going to be watching this closely because is this a single leg A to the upside in the 10-minute chart that's going to fail? 
I see enough residual strength that can keep little bits of, of buying coming in. But I'll talk about this uh, in my show coming up in the next uh, hour at uh, 10 o'clock when I usually do my target technicians hour. I'll go through the technicalities here. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, I just want to say, and also there's this long rectangle. You see this in the 10-minute chart with a beautiful symmetry right here to a particular candle going just to the exact bar, well, one bar late to the in the 10-minute bar to the left side, right side time match. And now we're still stuck in this rectangle. I, I see some strength trying to come in. But in, most importantly, what I'd like to do is to say, um, in the, since Tommy always spends so much time discussing in really great detail um, what, what the implications of the interest rates, interest, all, all the economic, the, the essentials that you see in the economy, I'm going to just go back here. I, the chart you see, I had a question during the break. Could I look at Savara? I think it's called Savara Inc. S V R A at 3.59. It's up two cents right now. Yeah, there's this rectangle formation that I always talk about, and a lot can happen within it. But so far, the technicals are strong enough. In fact, I'm going to make it a little bit narrower. The technicals are strong enough with the nine over the 14. The magnet's good, not great. Stochastic at 66. It's not good at all. On balance volume is not good, but the price is acting quite nicely, and it suggests to me that it will go into the 3.83, into the 3.80s um, for your leg D. Uh, looking at it long term, it's got a beautiful cup formation. In fact, it's got the same rectangle that we were looking at just a moment ago, because patterns repeat over and over. Now, I didn't want to take too much time here on this one because I had questions prior to that that get, should get priority. But look at this cup formation. So if you're looking at this a longer term, is this? I don't know if this is in the biotech area. I know that, Dan, you do a lot of work in the biotech area. I like, I like the fact that it doesn't look like a biotech. It doesn't have these, a lot of these long wicks in the monthly candle that close at the lows, but probably it is. Um, so this is a much better looking chart, and it's working its way higher. I like that, but be prepared that it could stay in the rectangle for quite a while. 320 is the level to watch because if it closes under that, it's going to take even longer. But it's so far, the, the weight of evidence suggests it's got a bit of a pull towards the upside. 375 level will be the first real, I, I'd even say it's a 359. 368 to 372 is really the area that you want to pierce and then hold. And that'll be really positive. All right. Now, let me just go through a couple of things here. I want to go just update where we are. <clears throat> the Dow at this particular point is up 90. Uh, no, it's not. It's up 125. And one of the th oh, now I can do that. I was holding off, holding off. I should have done it during the break, but I was busy. I just want to show you this. I, I'll do a lot more in my show coming up. Uh, that's that's part of the technical aspect that I like to look at. And what I've been saying and warning my subscribers that even though we are short two instruments, actually it's now three instruments, um, be prepared that everything is going to take a while. Look at this. Uh, this is the Dow chart with just the gray is the, is the closing price of, of the Dow in this particular instance. The nine is the nine period green a moving average because it went over the 14. The black period moving average is the 14 period. And look what happened. You got your left side, right side match when it goes to the April, then May high. Then you've got, sorry, decline. And then left side, right side, internal high, residual high back in July. And now you've got your left side and your right side. Now, are we going to sustain this move? Look how long it's taking for that nine to close under the 14. And in fact, the rule of thumb very often is that you could just hold off because when it finally turns, it gives you a really good sense of how long and how it does that. And the, the width between the 9 and the 14 tells gives you a sense of duration. So in this particular instance, I'm watching this very closely because look at this. The S&P S &P has come back to the line. It went under it, and that 9 is getting weaker and weaker, but it's still green. Look at the QQQ getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, up three at 376.96. And yet that price turned around and tried to go back up. So this is such an important week. I'm calling this an evolving rollover. It can't expect that it would just be in one. If yesterday was down after the 300-something point down uh, close on, where are we today, Friday? On Wednesday, if yesterday was like 280 points down, 
And then today was another 150 points down. I said, that's it. We've made the top. In this particular instance, it's a rolling top. It's a whole series of things. Look at the IWM. The IWM trading up 15 cents at 194.68. I, I can do this with anything. Look at the GDX. The GDX is pink. It's really struggling to go positive. Look at this. Is, and I'll go to gold because they don't always match exactly. But in this case, they do match quite well. Although this nine period moving average is only slightly under the uh, the other. But look at the TLT. That is, look at the width of the nine under the 14. So you can have a bit of a balance. You're up 62 cents. All right. So I wanted to just do those quickly to show you the kind of thing that I do for subscribers. Now, this is really important. Within the context of either calling a top or, or I use one or two indicators. I have some leading indicators and I have some lagging indicators. In this case, the 9 over the 14, that's a lagging indicator. And you can see how long it's taking. It's refusing to, <laughs> to cross negative. Look at the unbalanced volume. It's pulled back quite sharply. That one went right to, and this is fascinating, look at that, to the very day of the high to the very day of the low, right? Oops, no, two, one day early to the low over there. I mean, you can use different tools and use them in different different ways. I'll go through this more in my technical, Friday's technical uh, Chapman Wave analysis day. I can go into things a little bit more deeply. But now let me go through something that I think is important. If you're looking at the HGX, it is up, up now it's down three ticks at 563.53. One of the reasons why I say to subscribers that we're going to choose a particular housing stock uh, that was making all-time highs as a short, usually you want to go for the weakest because the weakest get the, 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 the biggest bang for the buck. But I want you to do this because, in a sense, I'm going to test the strength of the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index because this is a component of that. At the same time, as I'm saying, what is the impact of higher yields? And they are higher. I mean, they're 30, I don't know what the 30 year is at this particular point, but it must be, it, it's, it's tough for people now to, to, with prices still maintaining their higher highs uh, over this period, uh, to, to be buying a house. That's all. Okay, now I want to go through all the different things that I was asked about. Uh, let me go through one at a time. Uh, uh, so FXI, which is the China large cap ETF, made a peak D, pulled back, had a bit of a bounce yesterday, holding steady today, 29.37, um, down 18 cents. I had said that I think it's it's the rally that we saw, really a fabulous rally from the October low in the uh, 20, just under 21, 30, 33, uh, pulling back to the 25s and now running to 30, and it's trading right now at 29. I think it's due for a rest. So FXI, time for a rest. I'll be back. That was abundant things. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, 
as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, I'll be back to the E-mini futures in a moment, but I, I did want to get to a couple of things. And one is, so the FXI is in this consolidation phase, I think the 200 period moving average of 28.74, uh, it's about a point higher than that. I think that's going to be tested a couple of times, and that's going to be the big thing to monitor. Now, there we go. DDOG, question about uh, Datadog, <clears throat> security platform for cloud applications trading up 6 at 113.27. That sounds fantastic, except it was at 118. Did it actually hit 119? 118.02 on the 25th. Yesterday's low was at 105. Exactly, round number. Today you've got this big bounce. I think it's still, as I discussed it before, I think it's in this digestive phase. It's acting really well. It's come off the low beautifully, but I think it's there's a good chance that it stays in this range. And I'll give you the range. It could go slightly higher. High it could go to maybe 119, even 120. But I think I'm going to put this in here uh, and just say this is what I'm really looking at. Uh, if this is not the pattern that this is, well, the lower low doesn't keep it. Yeah, okay. So I think between 104 and 119 ish. I think it could be stuck there for a little while. Most importantly, if it gives back this gain by Wednesday or Thursday of next week, and even if it only gives back partially, but if this is a gap up on news, that's good news. It says that it's gotten through another th uh, three months of earnings report, and this is a good sign, and that says that people will be looking at this to buy on any major pullback because obviously if it's got good earnings and has held so well so far after 15 minutes uh, of play. So now let's see what happens if by today's Friday, if by Tuesday it gets to below 111, it's trading at 113.79 right now, that's going to say, uh-oh, be careful. It's going to be uh, just digesting the gain. So, yeah, you could do it as a starter position, knowing that you got your maybe three entries, one on a, a little uh, – maybe you so People have asked – three people that have asked me are actually long. Oh, oh, the one question, was that the options? I think you said September. Mm, that's a little tough because September options, because I'm expecting – this digestive phase in the market to continue a little longer, but the favorite stocks, the stocks that have had good earnings, so September, so that probably means that you go through to the 15th of September, the options expiration Friday, monthly. If, if that's the case, I think that you're okay. I, I really think that you've got time on your side. I wouldn't get too excited about it. But just on a short term, and do you see these gaps? Look, it's almost got a little a trend a channel with gaps here. So if at any point it starts to trade back into the 11070 area, then it says, you know what, I just need a breather. I've had a great move. I'm going to take a, a you know, spectacular move. Just the, the last big move from April, May, in fact, 
has gone straight up. It just needs a little time. So I'm just saying I like it. If you are looking to buy right here, that's a separate thing altogether. But I think everyone that asked either is in it from lower down. I would just hold it as a core position. I trade around it, and the trade around it says that if on the very short term, look, the Dow's now up 183. Let me just see, did Apple turn around from being weak yesterday? Uh, Apple, oh, Apple's down six. I'm not sure which one of the Dow. Let me have a look here to see if I can find out. Uh, Apple is down. I'm not sure which Dow stock is doing it. I'm trying to find it right here. I don't think it's updated. Oh, UNH. Okay, maybe UNH. Let's see. But this is the rotation through, and this is what the uh, 914 period moving average is telling me that there'll be a rotation. It's not going to be, yeah, yeah. UNH is, has made a peak D. It's trying to retest that. Um, and there's that inside track repellent zone in the uh, weekly chart. Yeah, I would say that this is the case that with the. Um, United Health Healthcare in this particular phase. We'll see if that that takes preference again. Uh, if other areas start to weaken, but in the meantime, UNH is acting really well. Uh, so, yes, it's acting really well, and because of that, um, it, it is helping the Dow. So within that context, uh, where were we? We were looking at uh, Datadog. So Datadog's in the area that's acting. Pretty well in terms of re relating to earnings come out, big spike up. So far, it's uh, given back a little bit, but the gap, it hasn't, the low was 140, and opened at 114.79. The low is at a, in the 113s, and here it is at 113.67. Uh, so just watch it. If it starts to slide later in the day, it says, oh, that's a little bit too much enthusiasm. It needs to digest the gains. But looking out, the monthly chart says, this is the first time that if in August that nine period crosses positive because it's still pink, if it crosses to green, it'll be the first time since it broke down early in 22 and went negative. It's the first time that the nine's over the 14, and that's a big positive. The weekly chart is very good in leg D. All the technicals are good. It did the left side, right side price time match we were looking for. Oh, oh, here's the next one right here. I forgot all about it. On the left side, on the 12th, the week of the 12th of August, a year ago, uh, 120.75 was the high. It dropped into the 60s. I would say a more than 50% decline is a problem. But then it's made a beautiful cup formation. And I drew this in as a left side, right side price time match. It went there to the week. Look at that. And then it broke out above it. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's got resistance to the upside, but it could still try to get to that. 127.5, but that coincides with what I said, 119 to 120 is a possible upside uh, target. But that's the way I'm looking at it. Next question was um, Amazon. Amazon, looking at it right now, big spike to the upside. I mean, look at that. It looked, there's a dreaded H pattern. That's the lowercase H. It did it once. It did it twice. It did it three times. Held the left side low of the week of, of the 26th of July. At 126.11, had it popped up to 133.87, comes back down. And yesterday it had a low of 126.41, and here it is. Up again. You remember we had a call from, gosh, who was it from Boston? He said, is this time to get in to uh, Amazon? We're looking at it together. And he said, I got in at 84, I think it was. And I said, oh, perfect timing. And uh, 84 nuts and 141 fabulous entry. Was it George in Boston? I, you know, I can't remember who it was, but I remember the call very well. Uh, he got it. He just nailed it almost at the exact low. And now you've got a, a – is this a brand new leg B or is this a G slash B? Well, once you've got this kind of strength going from the 120s to the 140s, in leg D in the weekly chart, it says even if it pulls back in what could be a choppy August, um, maybe it fills part of the gap, 136, five points. It doesn't get back to the peak that was made in the 133s just a, a, a few days ago. This is really good action, and I like to see it because it's helping the RTH, which GBI it looks like birth, and it doesn't. So it's helping the RTH. 
there. RTH, which is the Van Eck retail, 20% is Amazon. So look at this brand new movie. It goes D A B C D E. Wow, that really did help, didn't it? And the XRT is not. I'll do the work on that when I get back. Dow's up 172, SP's at 23. Be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're back to this last segment that we've got here. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. Um, XRT is at 61.16, up 21 cents. It's got, kind of got a topping action here, but that doesn't mean to say that it's going to top. The 9 is still over the 14. But if at any point it starts to break under 66, is a 67.17, and then closes two sessions out of three under 66, I say that's the sign to say just the digestive phase is unfolding right now. It's still positive. The RTH is uh, a little different, obviously, because where did I type that? Uh, let me type it over here. Right, right there. RTH, which had this, this is equal weighted, so Amazon doesn't uh, distort anything, and this is different. Uh, wrong chart. Okay, there we go. RTH. Got it. RTH had a big spike to a new recovery high. Then this is peak A, B. This is leg C in the weekly chart. So things are actually starting to improve. But I have to tell you, this is a rollover as far as I... Let me just sum it up quickly. As far as I'm concerned, yes, we are short for subscribers to the opening call right at the top on the uh, August the 1st. That doesn't mean a thing just because you time it that way. 
Uh, we'll see what happens here, but it's a slow process as this nine period moving average starts to move down towards pink. That means it goes under the 14. It can take another another five sessions, four sessions before it does it. It either does it right away or it takes time. And I think it's taking time, so it's a slow rollover. This is my opinion right now. Let's just go to the SMHs, the SMHs, trying to rally. Now they're down 43. And this, to me, is the benchmark. This is the, you know, where the SMHs, the semis go, so goes the market in the general uh, context. Longer term, that's just been the case. We'll see what happens. The day is young, and I'll be back for my show in a few moments' time, the Tiger Technician's Hour. Uh, Tommy will be back Monday, just had a conflict, uh, and I said I'll sit in for him for this particular time. So have a great weekend. I will see you in a few minutes for the Tiger Technicians Hour. If the market gives back, watch the Dow. If it only is up 50 points after 130, that says this, this rollover is taking effect, and that's probably part of the interest rate sector. And uh, the other thing is if it holds very well and it's up 130 or more, it means it takes even more time to roll over. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you in a few moments.